Hello and welcome back and it's the start of the week so clearly we've got a new unified product to discuss and today I want to talk about this little access point right here and I have but one simple question and this is directly to the bods over at unify what the hell are you smoking and can I have some um, this is the u7 pro xg and the xg S. These are two new Wi-Fi 7 access points. And I know you're thinking, there's a big pile of them over here. They've got loads of access points. They've got the U7 Pro, the U7 Pro Max. They've got the U7 Pro in wall, the U7 um, Lite. They've got all kinds of access points. Why do they need even more? Well, nice and simple. This is a 10 gigabit ethernet power over ethernet wi-fi 7 ap and this is something i didn't know i wanted and i didn't know could even exist until now arriving at around 200 nica for the xg and around 300 nica for the xgs version these are six and eight stream wi-fi 7 ap supporting 2.4 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz frequencies there now why is 10 gbe poe such a big deal nice and simple all of the existing wi-fi 7 access points from unify had one major thing in common some of them supported 6 gigahertz some of them didn't but the thing that was a through line for all of them is all of them were poe and more importantly all of them were 2.5 gigabit ethernet which is already two and a half times standard gigabit ethernet there and having to, uh, poe a 2.5 gig not only allowed for that power to go into the device but also opened up a decent amount of network bandwidth to travel from all of the wi-fi by seven devices taking advantage of multi-link um, operation and more via the six gigahertz frequency and using 320 megahertz packets into that and therefore have a decent amount of throughput to the rest of the network however when you look at the pro series devices when you look at the new xg series these support three frequencies again 2.45 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz and also with um, a decent amount of throughput via all of those connected devices weirdly these ap's unlike prior to wi-fi 7 meant that an access point like this one would actually be throttled potentially with just 2.5 gigabit ethernet when you really work it out if you've got three frequencies even if each one of them is running at two times two which is the case for the xg by the way and we'll get on to the xgs shortly it meant that there was the potential to fully saturate a 10 gig connections and actually exceed that in some cases so 2.5 gigabit ethernet would mean that if you had a bunch of clients accessing the access point there on wi-fi 7 and all of them enjoying high you know strength connections the result would be that they would be throttled by the wider network perhaps with a greater than gigabit um you know a 2.5 or greater gigabit internet speed going into your home or business or you're running a 10 gig nas or you're running a 10 gig switch and ultimately it meant that these access points as good as they are for wireless connectivity across the wider network there was still that throttling which brings us back to both the XG and the XGS. There's a reported 22 watts maximum power consumption on the XG with its six streams and the eight stream XGS at 29 watts power consumption. Now comparing those against the existing U7 Pro and U7 Pro Max, it's a little increase there with the U7 Pro at 21 watts at maximum power consumption and 25 watts on the U7 Pro Max. So these are going to demand a little bit more power consumption. But again, with that 10G PoE, the real question is going to be, are there any PoE 10 gig switches out there? Now, the short answer is there are very few 10 gig PoE switches in the market till now because it comes as no shock that at the same time that unify are pursuing these new 10 gig poe access points they're also rolling out a new range of 10 gig poe plus 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 rack mount and desktop devices there now these are all arriving in a 24 48 and 10 port rack mount configuration alongside an 8 plus 2 desktop poe 10 gig switch configuration there it's also worth highlighting that the 24 and the 48 port switches there also arrive with a couple of 25 gig SFP ports as well to really open up the floodgates in terms of your bandwidth there. The 24 port switch has 16 10 gig ports and 8 2.5 gig ports, all PoE, and some PoE++ as well. Now the 48 port switch, that has 32 
10 gig ports and 16 2.5 gig ports. And again, features six to 25 gig network ports as well, those SFP. So again, these are, you know, weapons grade switches overall. Man alive, I bet those switches are gonna be louder than God. Then you've got the 10 port switch there. It's an L3 classification switch. And finally, arguably the switch I'm most interested in as a, you know, hell loving desktop user. And that is an eight times 10 gig PoE switch that also features a couple of 10 gig SFP ports there on board in a desktop form factor and up to 155 watt PoE delivery there. That is PoE++, whereas the other ones are PoE++++. But I will say, all of these open up to Unify really scaling out a lot of their PoE appliances. But returning to the subject of these guys, let's talk about what makes one the XG and the other one the XGS. Now, first and foremost, you may see, you may have to get them close, there's actually the tiniest amount of size difference between them. The XGS model is ever so slightly larger. Hopefully the stock footage there on screen will show you. Now that is because the XG has got six spatial streams, whereas the XGS has got eight. Now the profiling there is uh, for the XG, uh, two times two on the 2.4 gig, 5 gig and 6 gigahertz frequencies. Now, in the case of the XGS, you've got 2 times 2 on the 2.4 gig, you have got 4 times 4 on the 5 gig, and 2 times 2 on the 6 gig. Now, why is that important for two switches that have got 10 gig Ethernet there for that PoE port on the back? Well, that's because in the case of the XG, there is enough bandwidth there across all three frequencies, and again, it will depend on how many devices that are accessing it at once. You've got the potential to get close, if not just exceeding 10 gigabit of shared network connectivity going into this AP, which means no throttling there when it comes to that output there into the wider network. Now, in the case of the XGS, it's actually closer to a potential 15 gigabit shared network connectivity coming out of those eight spatial streams. So if anything, there's actually a bottleneck by 10 GBU, which is kind of bonkers. And until we see greater than 10 gig PoE, or we start seeing dual port switches, um, uh, dual port APs, I think even then, that still makes this a bloody good purchase at that 300 NECA price tag. But what does that additional bandwidth and connectivity add up to there? Well, in the case of the XG, you can have over 300 active simultaneous clients with this device. In the case of the XGS, it goes up to 500 clients or more. Now, the coverage between them is 140 square meters for the XG and 160 square meter meters for the XGS. Whether that is you're gonna be running multiple in nodes or it means you're just gonna be using this as a singular high purpose access point. Also, we've barely touched on this, but Unify have changed the design somewhat on this. Here, we've got the XGS versus the traditional access point there. They're very similar in profile size, but it's only when we get them down side by side like this that you can see there is definitely a new design in place here. And much like the existing U7 Pro series, it is a plastic cover on top of metal internals there for heat dissipation when in operation. And lastly, the new APs are fanless and Kind of late to the party, Unify have started rolling out alternate colors. Apparently you're gonna be able to get this in two different colors at launch. Again, I don't know why that's not been the case for a long time with Unify products. I think as good as white is, it's easy to get dirty and it can look a little dated. <laughs> Just a quick correction, I didn't realize until after recording uh, the XG video, uh, that there are actually a series of different covers that you can get to apply to your AP. Now, how many of these are gonna be available for the XG series at launch? I'm not too sure, but at least it is good to know that you can apply something other than that white matte cover. But again, the extent to which this will be available on the XG and XGS is still yet to be seen. So I quite like the idea that they're now integrating other colors. I know some people have gone custom mod route, but still, long overdue. Which leads us neatly to the question of why would a user choose the XG and the XGS over the existing U7 Pro and U7 Pro Max? The newer generation devices here are rocking out a slightly higher price tag at around 10 to 15% more expensive. But with that, there is a new profile change and of course, different colors there for when they are deployed. The big thing here is the fact that it's a 10G PoE, allowing for a greater connectivity to wireless Wi-Fi 7 devices to the broader network. If you funnel this into a 2.5 gig port, just like you would with this, the inherent benefits would be almost zero there. So again, going for this new one 
is more about having 10 gig around your office or home network already, or if you're gonna scale up to those new switches. And don't overlook the fact that right now, even if you don't want to go for one of those new Pro XG switches that I talked about earlier on, Unify already have a PoE to mains adapter that supports 10 gig. That's right, for $39, they already have listed on their own website a 60 watt PoE mains converter that has two 10G ports there that will allow you to connect an existing 10 gig switch that doesn't have 10 gig PoE, but will allow you to funnel into the XG or XGS with 10 gig. It just requires it to be near a mains output. And for $39, it's a little bit more expensive than a lot of PoE adapters, but it's 60 watt and it's 10 gig pass through. So let's, you know, it's worth it. Which leads me to probably the biggest elephant in the room, why this video doesn't have the word review in it. And that is, I can't review these yet. At the moment, I've already connected both of these to my existing 10 gig Unify setup, and fair and well, they worked largely identical to that of the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max I already have in place. But reviewing this without a 10 gig PoE switch it really isn't telling you the full story right now. We need to know one about heat generation when this is being utilized to that maximum bandwidth, but also just how much of that Wi-Fi 7 MLO multi input to this device actually gets realized on that 10 gig. And until I've got my PoE 10 gig switch here, which will hopefully arrive soon, then I can give a full recommendation or not on this. But nevertheless, we have to applaud the fact that we now live in a world where 10 gig PoE Wi-Fi 7 access points exist and at a comparable price point to the rest of their AP series of devices. And for that, I've got to applaud it. If you want to learn more, we are going to do a follow-up video on this as soon as our 10 gig PoE equipment arrives here. And I'm really going to hammer the hell out of this device. Until then, there are links in the description to get hold of these yourself. Let's be honest, stock levels when it comes to Unify uh, on day one can always be a bit shaky. So if you do want to get hold of some of these now, there are links in the description and obviously are affiliated. Myself and Eddie here at NAS Compares will get a commission on anything that goes through there. It helps us to keep doing what we do. Or you can hold out for our deeper analysis and review of this when we've got some of these set up. You saw uh, last week we did uh, a lot of testing with the in-wall and the U7 Mini. We're hoping to do more of that with these new APs. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm behind the curve on this and you're not even that interested in U7 uh, Pro XG Wi-Fi 7 10 gig PoE switches and this is just out there stuff. Let me know what you think. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.